All right, my friends, and we are back. Adventure mode for Steam is a go. You can play this right now. All you have to do, I was a little confused by this. I had to figure it out. Uh, go into your Dwarf Fortress for Steam, go into the properties, and then set your beta settings to the public beta branch. You won't get this patch today uh, unless you do that, but if you do set your Dwarf Fortress client in Steam to the public beta branch, uh, it'll patch in like a second, and you can start playing this yourself. Uh, it's beautiful. First impressions, I'm already really, really, really happy with this. Uh, you can see it has most of the functionality of Adventure Mode in the previous version. Some things are not done yet because it is, you know, in beta. Uh, and I haven't figured out exactly how that's supposed to work. Uh, so immediately, DF Hack is off the table. I'm sure they'll catch up. DF Hack usually patches pretty quickly. But so if you're playing today, you're going to be playing legit, no cheats. Uh, and one thing that I noticed is butchering has not been added yet. So I went and I hunted. You'll see in this footage, I ended up struggling to hunt animals, but then I I hunted a duck by wrestling it to death. Oh, here here in the menus, I'm making my uh, classic Birdman. If you go back in the channel, you'll see that we always do adventure mode with some kind of Birdman because that allows me to fly, which really let, makes navigation and escaping from bad guys and a lot of things much easier. So uh, if you're new to adventure mode, I would say that creating a winged creature can be kind of like easy mode in some ways. Now, uh, I am already running into the issue where because bird creatures are a little bit smaller, they can't carry as much, they get exhausted and have to sit down more often because they are smaller than a human or even a dwarf. Uh, they're roughly like halfway between the size of, in this case, a peregrine and a human, so pretty small. So, But if you can handle that um, trade-off of not being able to carry as much, flying is pretty worth it, and I would recommend it. Uh, but what was I saying? So we, we make our classic Birdman, and that's what we're doing here. Uh, but they really, they upgraded all the graphics really nice. Combat looks nicer. Uh, and a lot of things are really simplified. Like when I first tried to play Adventure Mode here on the channel uh, using a pre-Steam version, I really struggled to figure out what things were happening and what, you know, what certain things symbolized. But in this version, it's pretty easy to find out. Um, in some cases, this footage um, is run at, at 2x speed just so you can see more in less time. But... Um, it only took me about 20 minutes to figure out everything, all the little menus and everything. And if you're a Dwarf Fortress player, it'll probably be like that for you as well. But they really did a great job with the graphical interfaces, that's my point. It's really easy to figure out uh, what your options are. You'll also see as we're setting up this character, uh, it's really much easier to set up like a group. You can have companions, you can bring animals. Uh, I, get my, I made a Birdman, so you'll see in this footage I pretty quickly... I made a, a Goblin Companion just to test out the feature. And I brought like a dog and a llama, and then I pretty much immediately flew away from them. And they're still being tracked in my adventure mode. I don't know what happens. I don't know if they can go on adventures on their own. Oh, that's also, that's, so we're going to see, there's also a cool automated thing. So you can have your uh, companions and your animals like automatically follow you and kind of take care of themselves. So I have that setting on. So they are now like way far away. I'm now flying on my own. And they are, uh, I, I guess, walking, hiking slowly <laughs> towards where I am. Uh, but we're going to find that out as we continue to play. Butchering, that's what I wanted to circle back and talk about. So they have uh, crafting and butchering, it says, coming soon, which is really cool because uh, previous versions of Adventure Mode had butchering, but they didn't really have crafting, and you could hack in some limited crafting ability with DF Hack. Watch my other videos if you want to learn how to do that. But, uh, so, but in this early beta it seems that both butchering and crafting are both not done yet. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this animal I hunted. I ended up successfully hunting a duck, but I don't know how to turn it into meat. If you're playing Adventure Mode today and you know how to render meat in this version, please let me know, because I do need to feed my guy. Uh, we're already, I'm using my standard strategy of just flying until I find a river and drinking and filling my water skin, so hydration isn't an issue. You can see we've just booted into the game. There's my goblin buddy and my two animals that I asked to have spawned in, and they automatically follow me. You can see I get up into the air to make sure that my bird flies like I remember it flying in previous versions, and you can see my, my gang stays with me. They stay with me until I start flying over hills and mountains, uh, and we end up, we do get separated. But uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Oh, so if I didn't finish that thought, please do leave in the comments if uh, you know how to render meat from a hunted animal, because I will eventually be getting hungry in a way that I can't hack my way through with DF Hack quite yet, so I would like to keep this bird guy fed, and uh, please let me know your strategies for that, since I do not see an option to butcher in this beta version quite yet. 
But yeah, just look at those graphics. Look at the, the portrait in the corner there. Uh, even in the really, really nice, like, lazy noob pack uh, pre-Steam versions that I was using, which were, by all accounts, you know, just beautiful, beautiful uh, graphical renders, this graphical interface is so good. And you can see, okay, so if you see right there, those, like, four little triangles down at towards the bottom of my profile, I was trying to figure out, oh, I just picked up a live thrips, which is a bug, and put it in my pocket. You're going to see me fumbling around with uh, tools. At some point later, I will actually accidentally start attacking animals with the live thrips. So the footage you're watching, before I get too distracted, so those four little triangles mean that my character is laying down on the ground, often from exhaustion, or they got knocked over. It takes me a minute to figure that out and what that symbol means, but now you'll know, yeah, standing up and lying on the ground is what I'm doing now. Uh, and I'm also, it, it doesn't show in the graphical interface, but we'll find out later that this whole time I am actually carrying a squirming live thrips, which is a is a fantasy bug, I believe. I don't think it's a real thing. Maybe it is. Uh, but I imagine kind of like an earwig or like a centipede. And I am holding it and using it as a weapon. You see, I just made a campfire there. So I'm just kind of playing with all the uh, all the abilities there. You can see it has the same like vision system as normal adventure mode where... Uh, you can fast travel and you can't see past trees, so like visibility and mobility when you're flying as a bird. Uh, you know, you can't fly straight up through tree canopies. We figured that out in an earlier video where I was like, why is my flight not working? If you try to lift off right underneath a tree, you'll probably bonk. But um, gosh, so much to talk about. Sorry if that last sentence didn't make any sense. But so we are holding a live thrips in our weapon hand and we will try to accidentally attack an animal with that later. But uh, really pleased with the graphics. I did, I think I talked through it, but the fast travel menu, which is shift T, capital T, uh, is still intact. So everything I remember from the earlier videos and earlier versions is there, except for butchering and a few other things. Uh, butchering is honestly the main thing where I was like, wait, I don't know how to make this work without that. But I'm sure I just overlooked something, and I'm sure somebody will put that in the comments to correct me. Um, all the other utilities are intact, as you can see here. You know, I'm looking through my menus trying to figure out what each button does. That's the other thing too. So one thing that the Steam version is great about is they did take most of the uh, utilities that you would need and they put them into the graphical interface as like a button menu. So even if you don't know any of the key bindings, which can be a big learn part of the learning curve in Dwarf Fortress, you can click around the, the GUI, the graphical user interface, and, and just see what all the options are. I have this combat menu open right now and already like that's teaching me about all the different options. So you can strike or you can wrestle, or you can let the uh, game decide whether striking or wrestling is more valuable. So in, you're going to see here, in my experience, if your adventurer is not that skilled, striking is not going to be that good for hunting because you're going to hit them once, or maybe, you know, whiff, like swing and a miss. And then the animal will be uh, frightened, and it will run away, and you'll probably lose it. You'll see here, I, I try to chase a pig and a horse, and I can't do it. Uh, wrestling small animals. I end up finally getting some meat, you know, killing an animal uh, successfully by you latch onto it with wrestling and then you, you basically strangle it, uh, and it can't get away from you. So that's, that's where wrestling really comes in handy. But so already just the way that this, um, the steam version is set up, it's helping me realize some things about, uh, this game and how the combat works and everything. Another really cool thing about combat that they add is like, you can set your dwarf to dodge or to like plant and to, so, it, it does like if then things where like an animal might charge you and you can actually have it say like, I want my dwarf to always dodge out of the way, like roll out of the way. Or I don't want my dwarf to, you know, dodge and roll out of the way. Like say you're on a cliff face and your dwarf might dodge and roll off a cliff or something. Then you say, no, I don't want that. You can toggle it. You can also say like, uh, if an animal charges, you should stand your ground as opposed to uh, dodge, which, you know, like if a duck is charging you, you can plant and stop it. But you can also set it automatically now. You can say, like, uh, let the game decide. So, like, if an elephant is charging you, it'll dodge for you because you're not going to plant and stop it. But if a duck is charging you, then maybe you stop and plant. A lot of really, really cool things like that where it's just, like, it. they really put a lot of things that make quality of life better and make the game make sense in a more intuitive way. Uh, we should, If we're still synced up, I'm, this is me failing to kill that horse and trying to figure out how the combat works. Oh, and because I am still fumbling with all the key bindings and trying to figure stuff out, there you go. So I just, I landed, it has a good little combat animation where you can tell when the creature is swiping at you and when you're swiping at the creature. So again, visually really, really much easier to tell what's happening with combat and with everything. This horse ends up like bruising my foot 
but we end up disengaging. This is also uh, what I was going to say earlier. This is where I'm attacking with the, the thrips, the live bug in my hand, uh, until I realize, and then I figure out about getting the copper mole back in my hand instead, and I manage to swing at it. At this point, the horse gets scared, and I end up losing it. I set my sights on a, uh, a sow, like a, a wild boar, instead, but that also kind of gets away with me because this is a brand new character and I'm not cheating at all, so it's bad at hunting. It's also, I made a mistake, so my, I made my guy like a, a, a boyer, uh, like a, a bowsman uh, as his main skill, but he doesn't actually have a bow. I didn't give him a bow in the uh, embark, so I could have thought of that better. But uh, So this horse gets away from me and then the boar gets away from me, but then I, I figure out that I can grab a duck, sneak up on a duck, and sneaking is intact and all that. It's a, it's a toggle with a graphical interface thing. It's actually in the lower left. You see that little raccoon with a raccoon mask looking thing? You can toggle that for sneaking. I think I should, I'm losing the pig now. Uh, but so I end up sneaking up on a duck and then I strangle the duck and now I have meat if I could butcher it. But yeah, somebody let me know in the comments about that because I do need to butcher for meat and then I should be uh, all set. The other good thing is they did add the very nice quality of life. You can save and make save splits really easily. Um, in my earlier videos, I was working not too hard, but I was working kind of hard to actually force save splits because, you know, the old versions of Dwarf Fortress, it's like they would really commit you to your mistakes, which can be fun, but can also not be fun. So here in this version of Adventure Mode, you can absolutely make save splits. So this uh, Peregrine Falcon guy will be safe so long as I can figure out how to feed him. Uh, I'm still chasing the pig. Still <laughs> still struggling to get that pig. But uh, but so yeah, I think I hit all my main points. I, I really just wanted to get a video out, let everybody know that this is out there. Adventure Mode for Steam is officially out there. And it is live right now as of 12 p.m. Eastern time. I think this video will be out, you know, like an hour later. I still have to put it together. But it is out there. And if you're not seeing it yet, that was the other important thing that I found and I wasn't sure everybody was aware of. Uh, you do have to just go into Steam, go into Dwarf Fortress, right-click Properties, scroll down to Beta, and then there's going to be Settings. You change it from None. If It's probably set to None is the de default. Like, I don't opt into any Beta stuff. Uh, you then opt into Public Beta Branch, and it'll just patch you right up, and you should be good to go. That was the other important thing. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to get the conversation going. Honestly, after this video, I'll probably jump back in and just keep playing, keep trying to figure stuff out. Uh, I'll be answering comments. You know, please leave me one if you have a question or uh, any advice for me. And uh, yeah, uh, if you made it this far, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. That all really helps the channel. We are, I know I've been saying this for a while, but we are increasingly close to my own monetization, which would be fantastic, which would give me more time and excuses to make these videos more often, which would be fantastic. But um, yeah, I think that is all I have for today. I am going to stay with y'all because we, okay, this is me sneaking up now. See how the little raccoon mask uh, symbol in the bottom left is now, has like a highlight around it. I'm sneaking up on the ducks and I am going to try to bonk one. Oh no, I'm not going to, so I was previously trying to bonk him on the head with my maul. But, uh, so yeah, that was, I think that was a failed bonk we saw just now. And then the other one, I say, okay, I'm going to try to just grab this thing with, I'm, you know, I'm larger than it is. I'm just going to try to grab it with both hands. And we end up doing that. Um, and you'll see the animation. You, you see as well the little, the four little triangles on my character keep coming up because my character is constantly falling down from being over encumbered. So I'm going to have to figure out his inventory and get that, get that fixed so that he's not constantly falling down from his oversized knapsack. But we do eventually figure out it should be happening right now. If you can find a small animal for hunting and just grab it with both hands. Did I lose it? Wait, now now I'm feeling like I'm an unreliable narrator because it looks like we just lost... Okay, we lost that second duck. I'm just a slower learner than I remembered. This third one, we grab it with both hands and we strangle it successfully for meat. And that's what I would recommend if your character has no major skills with a weapon to match where it can, you know, really sneak up and bonk... Uh, Oh, that's one thing they took out of Adventure Mode, actually. I'm remembering things I want to talk about now. And I only have 40 seconds. But they took out the Cones of Vision, which was really helpful for stealth. I wonder if there's a way to re-enable that. So it used to be you could see what direction the animal was looking in and specifically creep up behind it. And I haven't found that yet in Adventure Mode. I hope it comes back. But so, yeah, I would recommend for hunting just either have high stealth and skill with a weapon that you are good with and sneak up and bonk it or backstab it. Or in this case, like I'm doing, find something small and grab it with both hands using the wrestling menu. 
and just kind of throttle it until it becomes meat. And now I really am at a time where in the last 10 seconds, you can see I'm fighting the duck, the duck's fighting me, but we do kill it, we get the meat. Thank you for joining me. I will catch everybody in the next video.